In this video, we'll be covering some different design approaches that might be useful for learning and teaching activities in the digital technology subject area. There are many different design approaches that you might take. In this video, we'll be covering some briefly, which include design thinking, pseudocode, flowcharts, storyboarding, and mind mapping. Let's get started. Design thinking is a creative process for designing solutions. It's a framework that explores different thinking skills to achieve specific learning tasks. Design thinking takes designers through a series of problem-solving processes, from research to implementing solutions. It's an approach that is recommended in the design and technology subject area, but it's also an approach that is quite useful for designing digital solutions or solutions that combine the two subject areas. There are four primary design stages that include immersion, synthesis, ideation, prototyping and feedback, and implementation. This design process focuses largely on researching the context and using stories and observations to drive solutions. We won't go into detail here, but we've put some further reading links and a video which you can access in the full Prezi presentation. In years from foundation to year six, many students would have had some exposure to using storyboards, whether it be creating narratives in English, designing stages in a science project, or developing instructions. Storyboarding is an approach that is suitable for a number of different year levels and can be useful for helping students to break down their ideas or programs into smaller, more manageable stages. And it's also great for communicating ideas. Many creative professions use storyboarding to develop logical ideas and to demonstrate and plan early ideas, such as in game creation, web page design and animated movies. Professionals use pen to paper storyboarding before even touching a computer because it's very effective and a low, co low cost way to develop and test ideas without investing lots of time into making something perfect on the computer first. Storyboards are a great way to plan and design the overall goal and processes involved in creative solutions. For example, students might create storyboards for the sequence of stages in a game, or for a user's flow through a web page or an app, or even the way that a new creative design, such as a robot, operates. Storyboards can be done on pre-made templates or simply just with pen and paper sketches. One important phase in designing solutions is how do we get our ideas into code? How do we go from the program will do this at a very high level to working out what code we need to create the solution? One way to do this is with pseudocode. Pseudocode is a plain English version of a step-by-step -step code to be written. It's an informal high-level description of the computer program operations or an algorithm. It uses the structural conventions of a programming language, but it's intended for human reading rather than for the computer. Using the more high-level design approaches first to think about the whole program solution will help narrow students' focus on their overall goals and what kind of code, if necessary, is required for each component. We'll be discussing pseudocode in more detail when we start developing our solutions. Flowcharts are another tool that one can use to start translating ideas into code. Flowcharts in the primary years begin with linear steps and sequences, which they may have also started to involve decisions and loops. If you haven't done so already, you might start to introduce students to flowchart conventions and symbols that computer scientists use. For example, here on the left we have an image that shows the representation of different symbols and what they mean in a flowchart. These conventions are really useful as they provide computer scientists with a clear indication of what is happening in the flowchart. In years seven to eight, flowcharts are a fantastic way for students to break down more complex algorithms into steps needed to be created in code. One flowchart might not cover every algorithm in a program, but it might be that separate flowcharts are created for different parts of a program. Another use for flowcharts, besides figuring out code instructions, is that it can be used to design a method for planning projects. 
For example, in this image to the right, we have a flowchart for the processes involved in a data science project. The flowchart describes a logical process from data collection to the communication of results that inform decisions. Flowcharts are a great way for students to design their product ideas. This is a particularly useful approach where decisions and loops can be quite easily identified. As a simple example, students might create a flowchart design for an alarm that includes a snooze feature. Can you think of what it might look like? If you have a moment, try sketching out a flowchart. We've covered some examples of design approaches here, but there are many other ways. Even a simple sketch of a program idea or a product might be a great place to start. Are there any other design approaches that you would like to use that work well for designing digital technology solutions? Feel free to share your ideas with us and how they work in our Google Plus community.